Hey guys, I'm alive, hold on. I'm alive, sorry I've been gone for so long. Sorry the audio sucks, I didn't hook up my mic or anything, but got a new job and I've been super busy with that. And some of you may know, I mentioned it in other videos, I'm a personal trainer. I picked up a whole bunch of new clients um, in the form of a rugby team. So I've been working on that and I've just been really busy um, between work and doing the athletics about 65 hours a week and this took a back seat for a little while and the other reason it took a back seat and this will be the last video I make about this because I'm five foot eleven and I've had it up to about eight feet with this but um, for right now I'm not gonna make any more videos about this because it's pissing me off <laughs> So you'll see through my videos, I made far too many of videos about how my SIG cross would not shoot. And I did find one bullet that it will shoot rather consistently with, um, and, and that is the 150 grain SST. And that's great. And I'm shooting 0.7s and 0.8s relatively consistent, like good enough that if that was the bullet I wanted to shoot all the time, that I would be extremely happy. But it's not the bullet I want to shoot all the time. And my thought process in shooting 308 and enjoying the 308 because I really do enjoy it. I think it's a great cartridge for 7, 750 and in, depending on your elevation. Um, my, my big focus on that is shooting bullets that matter to me. And I like heavier grain bullets for the 308. Um, so what does that mean? It's not the 150s. I think 150s are low. I think shooting a 150 grain bullet out of a um, 308 kind of handicaps you. A little bit at range I, I don't think it does up close because I'm getting good feet per second I think I'm hitting almost 2800 with a relatively mild load but it just doesn't have the energy I want and I don't I'm not an energy freak I don't believe that kinetic energy is the end-all be-all of, of shooting I, I think it it's a factor that should be formulated in when you're using a good effective well-made bullet that helps expand the bullet because it's not like you shoot something and it you know, throws them back, the crap doesn't happen. Um, I've seen a person get shot by 50 cal. Didn't happen with that. That had a lot of energy. And so bullet construction and the kinetic energy to open the bullet. And that's that's my take on that. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. But you can't prove it or disprove it, so it's all good. Um, so not shooting well except for the 150 SSTs. I like to shoot 178s, 180s, and 190s. And I couldn't get any 178s to shoot. I can't get 168s to shoot. I, at 168 would be a fallback for me. I'd say that would be acceptable. I'll take a, a 168 grain bullet in place of a 178. It's a very minimal difference. And with modern bullet design, your, your ballistic coefficient and your sectional density is so good that you know I still get in the range that I want and I'm still get, I can still get the effect that I want if I'm hunting. And so with that, I contacted SIG again. I said, hey, you know, I called him up. I can't remember the name of the guy, but hey, you know, I'm not having accuracy issues, or I'm having accuracy issues. I'm not having good luck. We went through what's your scope, what's your mount, what are you doing, have you changed anything, and all this. And I told him everything. I've taken it apart and all this. He's like, well, it's in the user manual. You're you're good. Um, he recommended me shooting it without the brake. Okay, I guess. A again, I like brakes. Think of them what you will, but I like having a break on my rifle. Um, I like seeing impacts at two, 100 to 200 yards at the 308, which you normally can't do. And somebody's going to come in and like, 308 doesn't recoil. Yes, it does. It does. Everything recoils. A 22 recoils. A 22 moves. And so with this light rifle, I don't care about how hard it pushes back. If it put, pushed back in a very linear fashion, and that's all it did, I could stay on target. But it could so light, it flips up. And so... I've done a few things. I had taken the rifle apart, well, stripped it down to its uh, factory configuration to send it back. But then after talking, because I was ready, he's like, yeah, we're going to test it and we're going to make sure it's accurate. And if it's the barrel, we're going to replace it for you. Sorry about all your problems. I was like, cool. Um, do I get a picture or a um, piece of the target that you shot at the 100 yards? And he's like, oh, we don't shoot at 100 yards. So... You're selling a rifle, SIG. I know you're not watching this, but 
This pisses me off, and I and I should have known this because I know they beta test on their users, apparently me. Um, they are going to strap this into a device, a lead sled or something, I'm assuming, and shoot it at 25 yards and see how it does. For a rifle that you sell as a precision PRS style hunting, lightweight hunting rifle, that is unacceptable. Not acceptable. So why the hell would I even send it back? Why the hell did I spend $1,500 on a rifle that at least should shoot MOA? I'm not asking for a half inch gun. I'm asking for MOA. And in a 308, to me, that's 150, 168, and 178 grain bullets. You should be able to do all of those. I had a Ruger American Predator before this that I should have never sold. And I'm tired of looking back and saying I shouldn't have sold that gun. Never again. I had a $350 rifle with a $200 scope on it. I got it on a discount, but even at full price, I'm at $36,750 for a rifle that would shoot three quarter to half inch groups all the damn time with everything I put in it. It didn't really matter what bullet I used. It didn't matter what powder I used. Hell, I shot a .3 several times with really cheap spear bullets. Like, not even their match are, are really good hunting bullets, just their soft points. And their soft points are deformed and they're all beat up. And so that's not acceptable. Um, I'd really hope to do well. I had shot like an hour, another hour of video where I was going to bring it to you and say, hey, I've got all these great results because I did this for reloading and I did this and I changed this and I fixed this. And y'all didn't want to see another BS range trip. So um, I am going to go out this week and shoot it without the muzzle brake. Reluctantly, I don't think that's an acceptable solution, but I also bought another muzzle brake And this is a fur franz. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. They make a blast mitigation device that goes around it I'm not going to use that but um, boop, 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 boop. It's got ports in the top three side ports um, It's a little bit longer than the VG6 that I had on it. I do not like the VG6. I don't like the recoil impulse it stops a lot of the recoil. I like that. I just don't like the impulse. It feels weird. I'm going to try this one. I got a smoking deal on it. Um, and then the other issue I came up with, which could make me look like a giant ass, <laughs> and I'm going to admit it here, um, it was time for my annual eye exam. My eyes have been kind of tired. I thought my reading glasses were, were getting out of prescription, so I went in. Evidently, I need regular glasses, too. And so that could be a very minor thing. And I talked to the eye doctor about, I shoot, I'm having problems. I did notice the last two times I had a blurred reticle no matter where I put the parallax. And he said that should have an impact. So, I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't think it's going to make this rifle shoot better. If it does, I'll own it. It's cool. I'll own it. Because honestly, at the end of the day, like, I want this thing to shoot. And it's not because I paid $1,500 for it. Like I want, to, I want it to shoot because I like the concept of the rifle. It's a relatively light rifle, relatively light. There are lighter. Um, I like this gun a lot. And I think there's a good future for this gun if they can get this shit figured out. And it's rather frustrating. And I know y'all are tired of me hearing me talk about it. So I promise you this is the last video, last one, until I can get two to three range trips all my shot groups consistent, excuse me, consistently at or below MOA. And I say that even knowing that I may just replace the barrel because I like the gun so much, I'm not gonna send it back. They're not gonna do anything for me. I'm not gonna sell it because it's like, what do, what do you get then, another $300 gun? And then I thought about like a Bergara or something like that. They're heavier, but that's cool. <laughs> like. I feel like I'm shooting a space gun or something. And like I wanna, I wanna enjoy shooting the rifle that I have, and I enjoy this rifle. Like, like I just think it's cool as hell. I like, I love how I got this grip for it. The the grip angle's great. I wish I had a small little like uh like on the Daniel Defense Delta. It's got that screw in piece for your thumb. Oh, that'd be sick. I wonder if I could tap something into that. But I this is going to be my project gun as soon as I get it to shoot for seracoding and all that stuff. Like I want to have fun with this gun. And I backpack hunt from time to time. So I want to be able to strap this to my backpack and go hunting. And so I promise, I promise, I promise, no more videos about this until we're done. Until it's ready to shoot. 
till I have a better option, a better answer, or whatever, what have you. Um, probably I'm going to change the optics. I want a lighter scope. I'm at nine and a half pounds with the the big forge. I, I want to be closer to eight and a half. So I think I can do that with. Um, a, it's a cheaper scope. It's the Bushnell Engage second focal plane, locking turrets. Doesn't have a zero stop. But I love that scope. It's super clear. I think for the money, it's really hard to beat. And um, I think that's all I got for right now. I promise I'm gonna start getting, try to get videos every other week right now until I get my schedule right. Um, still learning a whole lot at work. Um, trying to take over a, a location. It's a fitness studio. It's a kickboxing fitness studio. I'm trying to take it over. And so I'm being trained on that now. So my hours are really weird, but I'm gonna get back into this. I'm gonna get back into sort of tactical stuff as opposed to whining and bitching about my SIG cross, I promise. And with that, stay tactical.